Richmond Encore water heater, uh, point of use electric water heater, and I'm currently descaling it. Uh, I have a problem, the flow sensor, it's a magnetic reed relay. Uh, it stays on after the water is shut off. And so therefore, the main tank tr uh, breaker will trip. So I'm descaling right now. I've got some, I've got a little uh, redneck system here. I put a funnel in place and, uh, and I've got it into a bucket. And right now it looks a little green. And I've been moving it back and forth. And I actually have wired in 120 volt and I only run it, I have it on a switch, and I only turn it on just for a few minutes just to get some heat. So I'm heating the vinegar inside the boiler tank to help clean it. But there's also a flow sensor here, and I'm going to figure out how all that works because I cannot find any reference to these numbers on the flow sensor. Um, I think I can see it here. You have 180. Uh, I think it was, I don't know what it, the other one was, but 160 and 270. So this is a slide, uh, this little board will slide. There's obviously a magnet that moves inside on flow. So we're going to figure out how that works. Okay, I have got the magnetic relay. I took it out of the top and I've got a magnet here. I can feel the field. I can I can sense the field difference here when I move the magnet this is obviously right here underneath that's where the magnet is right now it's sitting right there ah so here is the magnetic re relay right down here and I have it tied to an ohmmeter if I take this magnet you see if I hold it to it it does close so that tells me this read relay is good. So they're staying. It and it looks to me the way this works is when it's in circuit, this read relay is closed normally, and so when there's flow, it opens. So the circuit board is sensing for flow rate, and the flow rate would be when the magnetic read relay opens, the heater begins operation. That's enough for now. Okay, so what I did here, I adjusted this little board and I slid this. I'll do it right now. Loosen it up here a little bit. There we go. And as I slide this board, oh, I've got to loosen a little bit more here. There we go. If I slide this board, to the right, you see the ohm, ohm meter is telling me that the relay has closed. So I'm going to, I believe what I said earlier, I was wrong. When the relay closes, the water heater starts as I'm moving closer to the magnet. Remember I said the magnet is in this area right here. Sorry. <laughs> the magnet is in this area right here. So, I'm going to slide this until it stops. And you see if I go too far, so there, I'm going to go about mid-range, right about there. Again, that the water heater would be running. There, I'm off the magnet. I'm going to try it right there. I'm going to tighten it. So I'm going to set the phone down here a second. So there, I tightened it. I have a a new setting here because when I first put my ohmmeter on here this thing was the magnetic relay was closed and this is the problem I've had is this heater stays on so now that I've been cleaning this with some vinegar and I've got it I think pretty well cleaned out on the inside we're gonna keep this set up I'm gonna hook it back up in circuit uh, without electricity I'm gonna hook it back up in the plumbing side the water I'm gonna run some flow and test with the ohmmeter to determine when it opens and closes. So, more later. 
Okay, I've got the magnetic reed relay is wired to the voltmeter. I am got the plumbing hooked up. And I've got the bathroom faucet, hot water faucet uh, turned on. I got an ohmmeter. I can open the valve right here. And so I'm going to just barely open the valve, get some flow rate. There you can hear. I have flow through here. And actually it's very good. There I shut it off. Turn the water on. Off. Water on. Off. Water off. On. It's looking really good. I think that getting that uh, magnetic reed switch calibrated and getting this thing cleaned out with vinegar was the cat's meow. So I will publish this so folks can see how all this works. Uh, by the way, what I did earlier, I removed this connector right here. I added 120 volt. Even though this is a 240 volt unit, I knew the 120 volt was not going to hurt anything to temporarily pulse it with 120 volt to where I could heat up this tank with vinegar inside of this. And that worked well. Now I do see there is the ability to unscrew this and take this electric element out from this chamber. However, that still would not have gotten vinegar or cleaning of this tube right here and this was the area that I was most uh, interested in cleaning out and getting uh, lime build up out of there so anyway so that's uh, uh, that is what we have so far here we go we got it wired in we got 240 volt coming in at 30 amps I still got the cover plate off the board. I have the cover plate off the board. Flow sensor is now wired in to the circuit. And we're going to turn the water on. There's the flow. There's the heating. I can feel the heat rise here. It's warming right up. I could turn it up a little bit temperature wise. There we go. Nice and hot. Good hot water coming through. Flow off, flow on, flow off, flow on, and we have hot water. It's working as it's designed. Very good. Okay, I got the front cover on. Uh, one word of advice: uh, I moved this this. Uh, resistor which is which is a thermal resistor it will heat up as it's used and I moved it out from the board so it gets air on all sides of it and it is warmed by touching it so it does work I mean it's 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 doing its job but this way I don't burn the front panel I keep the heat away from the printed circuit board so I just kind of moved it out in a way and it will not affect the uh, operation whatsoever. Okay, we're now on standby. I'll turn the water on. There's our heater coming on. We have full heat adjustment and I have hot water going into the uh, into the sink. I can feel it heating up. So we're doing good. So I'm going to shut the water off. There, I turned it off, water back on, everything's working great.